If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new, well, you know that the first few episodes were all about me building my bike, but I'm not going alone. Charlotte is going, the little XC is going, meaning that that bike needs a serious overhaul and Charlotte needs to start learning about mechanics. She needs to know how to fix her own bike. So first of all, nice wash, then push it inside the garage and let's start building. bad for us not to destroy the floor. We first decided to install the center stand because we need to remove the wheel so we can replace the bearings and we need to remove the swing arm so we can replace the bearings and we're also going to replace the rear shock absorber but like we're limited on our tools and we want to practice with all the tools that we can carry on the trip so the center stand up first and now everything off so we can continue how do you think it's going? Hot work. <laughs> Hard work. Let's go. We are at this point replacing bearings. We're using this two tires as a stand so we can smack them around. And the bearings were not that bad. Actually, they were quite good. But we have a long trip ahead and we bought the bike second hand to do this. The bike already has 40,000 kilometers. So although they are very good, we don't know when they were replaced last time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace everything. The bearings on the wheels, the bearings on the swing arm, eventually the bearings on the steering. Everything needs to go if we want the bike to be as zero kilometers as we can. Well, to make sure it lasts. Good maintenance is the key for a long lasting gear. And it's good that Charlotte is learning, it's good that Charlotte is doing, and it's great that we're getting the bike proper. Very excited. Rent a clock. I'm very sad with Yamaha because, well, they didn't make it easy. To replace the shock absorber, you pretty much have to take the entire back of the bike apart. I've seen some modifications where people are drilling into their airbox to make it work and to make it fast. It's one screw. It's hours of work for one screw and a bike, well, not even the bike, it's a part that needs to be lubed, needs to be serviced, just makes no sense at all. I honestly cannot understand why they did what they did. Then I'm also sad with Oter, that's where I've been buying most of the kits, most of the things for the bike. They are. XT600 specialized and I don't mean they have to have everything but like we bought the bearings for the swing arm we bought the bearings for the T right there on the floor for the suspension like a little note just saying these are not all the bearings necessary and I would have bought the rest of the bearings somewhere else like this I bought them from them and now we're gonna have the service half done it's Sunday there's no way for us to buy the bearings today, so no way we can finish the bike today. It's just, I don't get it. Like specialize, either have everything or have special notes. Last time that we bought something for the bike, they made sure to call us to ask, well, you know that this might have this and this problem or you might need to get this or that. They were fantastic service, absolutely fantastic. We were delighted with it. This time, not at all. And not delighted with Yamaha at all. Not delighted with TFX, TFX, the suspension we got for her in the back at all. Like, just a little simple thing. This is the way it goes in because it has the extra place for the oil. And we put it in, and uh, yeah, obviously we put it in the wrong way around. It needs to be switched because now the airbox hits on it. Just little details make customers' lives a lot happier, builds customer trust, builds customer awareness towards their products, and I would be the first person to say buy here, buy here, buy here, it's absolutely perfect, 
And now I'm just saying by here, here, and here because they are the ones that have it. And for me, that makes me a little bit sad. Like I said, no need for to have everything, but just a little note makes a big difference. It's the next day. As you can see, we're no longer in our garage because yesterday throughout the night, we pushed through like good mechanics, good people, and we fitted the wheel, we fitted the rest of the bearings, like we fitted everything we could. I think we did a very good job. And then we decided, let's take the bike out for a run. But because we were trying the heated clothes with the bikes, with the bike off, we decided, we assumed that the bike wouldn't start because we drained the battery. Well, the place we are working now has a huge hill climb and I decided, well, I can throw the bike down here and just jump start it. That didn't work at all. So the bike ended up staying here for the night. We tried a couple of things at night to try and make it work. We we did a lot of things, didn't we? We tried a couple of we things. We tried a couple <laughs> of things. And then we decided to call it a night, go do some research, come back the next day and we kind of just found out we did not connect the power commander, meaning that we could have tried anything, the bike wouldn't work. So always pay attention when you're working on the bike to attach everything you, well, removed. And if anything fails, do what we did. Go back to the schematics and find your way around. So. Let's plug this in, take the bike out of here, see if everything that we worked on actually works and is working well. Fit the rest of the plastics because we didn't even put all the plastics. It was supposed to be a ride around the block that lasted 10 hours. Well, more or less. And I'll see you guys in a bit. The problem clearly was that. We took the bike already for a ride, test drove, do everything we needed to do. Everything is more than okay. We already also went to do some shopping, meaning that some bearings that like I rent earlier in the episode we couldn't find, or well, didn't come as a kit. Now we order them all, meaning that we're gonna replace them afterwards. But for now and for today, there's only one thing missing, which is taking the bike to a very, very special guy here in Lisbon that's gonna replace this front that the bike originally has for a WP48, meaning different triple clamps, different wheel, different brakes. Well, pretty much everything's gonna be different, meaning that we're gonna have upgraded suspension in the rear, upgraded suspension in the front. Eventually, when customs decide to give us our tank, a bigger fuel tank, new bearings, new oil, we're also gonna install a different oil diffuser that's gonna allow the bike to work a little bit smoother and a little bit colder, but that is gonna be for another episode. For this one, if you're not yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing, hitting that big thumbs up in that subscription bell. And let me know down below, which bike do you like the most? Our F800 GS or what we are gonna do with this little one? As far as we're concerned, see you guys next Wednesday.